Hello and welcome, my name is Jay. In this video, we'll learn how to build a sales dashboard from scratch in Power BI. So whether you're an experienced analyst looking to sharpen your skills or a beginner diving into the world of Power BI data visualization, this is the video for you. In this video, I'll cover how to import data set, map table relationships, create a tooltip page, create a dashboard page, and finally, we'll publish the dashboard. By the end of this tutorial, you'll have a comprehensive understanding of how to use Power BI to create a sales dashboard. Alright, so let me give you a quick demo of the dashboard that we'll be building in today's video. Alright, so all right, here's the dashboard. It's a very beginner-friendly dashboard. And to be honest, if you can build something like this from scratch, then I think you're pretty much uh, prepared to be ready for your first uh, data analyst position or data analyst job. So some of the features that we'll be implementing in this dashboard, such as the filters for three different categories. Then we're going to insert the uh, summary section, and which is going to be uh, this section right here. And I'm also going to show you how to create a very simple uh, tab interface to allow users to select different tabs. Now in terms of the uh, visuals or the charts, We'll first build a very simple uh, bar chart. Then we're going to dive into something a little more uh, complex. All right, so this one's going to be the decomposition chart. Then we're going to build a, a math visual. And from the math visual, we're going to create this uh, custom tooltip to present the sales summary for each state based on the selection. Then we're going to finish uh, this tutorial with this uh, sales chain uh, summary. And to be honest, I personally think a good visualization is something that cannot be easily replaced by AI or ChatGPT anytime soon. Now with that being said, let's get started. Alright, so before diving into the tutorial, make sure that you go to the link in the description below to download the exercise file. Now from the exercise file, you are going to uh, see these two uh, files. So this one is going to be the data set that we'll be using to uh, create the dashboard. Let me open the file. Now from this Excel file, we have five tables. Data, which is going to be a reference table to map different uh, dates. Then we have the product table, region table, which is going to be a reference table. Then we have the sales data table. And the last one is going to be the state reference table. And the PNG file is going to be the uh, dashboard background that we're going to use to design the overall look of the report. All right, so go ahead and create a blank Power BI file. Now to import the data set, I'm going to go to Home, Excel Workbook. Then I'm going to select the data file. Now for uh, demonstration purpose, I already clean out the uh, records in the Excel file, so don't have to do anything. All right, so make sure that you select all the tables. Then we're going to load the tables into Power BI. And once the tables are loaded, I want to uh, insert the, the PNG uh, template. All right, so go to view. And here I'm going to enable uh, format, bookmark, and selection. Now for now, I'm going to hide the uh, filters pane because I don't think I need that uh, anytime soon. Now here, enable the uh, format pane. Now expand canvas background. Now here I'm going to browse the uh, PNG file. Now, the reason why you don't see uh, the background getting updated because by default, the transparency is set to 100%. You'll need to turn that down to 0%. Now, I create the uh, background image using Photoshop. And because I create a uh, background image using a 4K uh, resolution, so here uh, to turn that down, we need to change the image fit uh, ratio to uh, fit. And that's going to resize the image to fit into to the Power BI report. 
Now, some people may prefer to use、uh, PowerPoint to design the、uh, background. For me, I personally like to use、uh, Photoshop just because the resolution is a lot more clear. I sometimes find that using PowerPoint to design the、uh, background image, the resolution can get a little bit pixelated once you work on a large monitor. Right now, let's、uh, work on mapping the table relationships. Now, here I want to go into the model view. All right, so by default, our、uh, Power BI is going to attempt to map the relationships for you. And this one thing I forgot to do, so I want to go back to settings. Should not that、uh, uh, should be under file, options and settings. Then click on options. Now under current file, I actually should do this、uh, right in the beginning. But here I want to make sure that we turn、uh, this option out. Detect column types and headers from structured sources. Make sure that you turn the import relationships from data sources on first load out as well. So the reason why you want to turn off those settings because Power BI、uh, doesn't necessarily makes the the best、uh, judgment when it comes to mapping the relationships. So it's always better to、uh, do this yourself. Plus, you will get more experience on、uh, uh, mapping the relationships. Now here you can see that the tables are all over the place. I want to reorganize the、uh, tables.、All、right, so here、uh, this should be a give me. Okay, so on the bottom right hand corner, this should be a reset layout option. Now click on that, and it's going to reorganize the、uh, tables into a single view. Now to map the table relationships, I'm going to use the star schema. So first, I'm going to、uh, position the tables into kind of like a, a star layout, and my fat table, which is going to be the event table, is going to right in the middle. Now we know from the state、uh, table, this is going to be the table that contains all the state information. Then we have this region table, and it's going to be another reference table, but this is going to reference to the state table. Now, just to make sure that the relationship that Power BI created is correct, I'm going to double click on this up arrow, and that's going to display the edit relationship dialog log. Now, the state table is going to be the left table, and the region table is going to be the right table. Now, from the state table, we can have、uh, multiple states that are tied to the same region. So, in that case, our relationship type is going to many to one, and which is correct right here. Now, from the sales table, I want to map the customer state ID to the state ID、uh, field in the state table. And from the dates table, in here、uh, I have a typo. Right, so let me、uh, fix the table name. Let me name that to date. Now, from the date table, I want to drag the date field to the older dates column. And this should be one more table in the product table. And it looks like the relationship between product and sales table are already mapped. Now, I want to go back to the data view. Now, if we look at one of the、uh, key column or the primary key column, so for example, if we look at the state ID column, so the column data type is set to whole number, which is an integer, same thing with part ID. Now, if I look at、uh, other tables, state ID is also、uh, marked as an integer data type. Now, when you are working with a database or when you are working with tables to map relationships, any time a column is not be used. As a calculation column, such as profits column, sales column, or quantity column, we want to make sure that we set the data type of those primary key and foreign key columns to a string or text. Now here,、uh, go back to the Home tab. I want to go into Power Query by clicking on Transform Data. 
Now, what I need to do here is I need to go through each table. I need to uh, look for the ID count. For example, from the date table, I need to convert the month's key count. Make sure that the count is select. Then we're going to go to the transform tab. Now here we want to change the data type to text. And select replace current. Now we need to do the same for other four tables. Now if I want to change multiple uh, counts at once, you will simply hold the shift key. Then select uh, both counts. Then we're going to change the data type to text. Now, once we uh, change the primary key data type to text for all the tables, we can go to home, save and apply. Now, if we look at one of the counts, now my primary key counts are all converted to text. All right, so once we establish the uh, table relationships, let's work on creating the calculate counts and the measures. So I'm going to uh, click into the sales table. And let's already uh, create the uh, calculate counts. All right, so that's okay. Um, so I guess um, for uh, this exercise, we'll simply just go ahead and create the dashboards. Now, whenever you are building a dashboard, uh, you always want to make sure that you only display the fields that you want to use. Now, here I'm going to use the shortcut Alt Shift 9 to expand all the fields. Then I'm going to go through each table. I'm going to hide the uh, primary key field. Right, so once I hide all the primary key and the foreign key fields, I can go to the uh, report view to start creating the dashboard. Now, whenever I start uh, building a dashboard, the first thing I would like to do is insert my logo or other icons to make my uh, report a little bit more personalized. All right, so go to the Insert tab. Then I'm going to click on Image. And here I'm going to insert my logo. And by default, the uh, aspect ratio is going to be locked. And on the size and position, I'm going to unlock the uh, ratio. Then I can freely resize my logo. All right, so I'm going to simply resize the image to fit right into the uh, corner here. Now, the other thing I want to insert is when the report is updated or created. All right, so here, click on text box. And today is, yeah, so I'm going to type last updated. And today is going to be June 2nd, 2027. Now I'm going to increase the font size to 18. And for the uh, font style, so this one is uh, really based on your personal preference, but I really like to use this uh, thin uh, font style. And I'm going to position the uh, text. Can me turn up the background? And we resize uh, the image. And I'm going to position the text in the uh, bottom right hand corner. Now I'm going to uh, set the font color to uh, white 50%, dark 50% color. And that doesn't seem to uh, change the font color. Let me try again. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I'm going to align to the right. All right, so that looks pretty good. Uh, let me see, I think 16 might be a little better. Okay, I think 16 looks pretty good. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, create the, the cards. Now, a card feature in Power BI is a visualization tool uh, that is typically used to display a single value. Now, here from the uh, visual libraries, I'm going to choose card. Now, since I already built the dashboard already, I already know the size ratios. All right, so I want to go to the format uh, pane. Now, uh, to create the summary, from the sales table, I'm going to make that as total quantity. So I'm going to choose quantity field. 
Now for the car size, I'll set this to 107 for the height, 204 for the width. And for the uh, location, I'll set that to 32 for horizontal and 141 for vertical. Now because I already created the, uh, the background layout, and one benefit using your own image as a layout or design is that for one, you're going to improve the performance while using any additional objects or visuals from Power BI itself. All right, so let's finish uh, formatting the card. And here I'm going to expand all the categories. Now I want to uh, change the font style of the uh, value. All right, so here my default font is already set to ding. And I want to decrease the font size to 27. And for the unit, I want to uh, display everything. So I'm going to set that to none. And for the decimal place, I'll set that to zero. Now from the number here, uh, I want to format the number with the uh, thousand separator. Right, so here, uh, let's do that right now. Go into my sales table and I'll click into the quantity field. Now from the count tools uh, tab, I want to make sure that we enable the uh, thousand separator uh, delimiter of, of separator. And that's going to format the number a little bit more uh, properly. Alright, so uh, I want to turn off the text wrap to keep uh, the text organized. And for the uh, category label, which is this right here, I'll increase the font size to 14, and I'll change the uh, font color to black. Now for the category name, I'm going to double click on the fill, and I'll name this as quantity. All right, so that's going to be the card visual of the first of the uh, first card visual. I'm going to make a copy. So basically, we can use this as a template to create the other uh, three card visuals. All right, so here I'll paste that right here, and this one's going to be the sales percentage of all regions. All right, so I want to go to sales. It looks like I forgot to create the uh, the measure. And let's do that right now. So it's pretty uh, straightforward. All right, so under the sales table, I'm going to create a new measure. I'm naming this as sales percentage of all regions. And the formula is pretty straightforward. So we'll divide the uh, total sales, and it's going to be uh, the numerator. So it's going to be sum, sales, sales column, divided by the uh, total sales of each region. And because we are going to calculate the uh, total sales of each individual region, so we need to uh, use the calculate function to perform the calculation. All right, so here we want to calculate the uh, sales. And this will be some function, um, sales, sales. Now, because we want to group by all the regions, and the regions is going to be coming from the region table. So I'm going to wrap the uh, table with the old function to ignore any uh, filters, and enter. All right, so going back to the car, let me increase the font size. Now here I can go back and choose the sales percentage of all regions. And by default, that's going to display 100% because right now uh, all the regions are select. Now I want to display the value as percentage. So I'm going to go back to the measure. Now change the uh, data type to Let's do, actually, uh, we can do, we can simply just do a uh, percentage. Now, depending on your uh, use case, in this case, I want to set the decimal place to zero uh, decimal. 
All right, so we are finished with the second car visual. Now let's create the, the sales uh, total. All right, so here let me look at the uh, horizontal location, actually, uh, vertical location, 141. And this will be 141. And for uh, this summary, this is going to be total sales. Now, because the number is quite large, so I want to format the uh, unit a little bit. All right, so I want to go into code out value category. And for the display units, I want to change that to millions. And I'll set the decimal places to two. And here I want to insert the dollar sign. So click on the field, then on the contours, make sure that you enable the uh, dollar currency symbol. Now notice that every time I make a change to the format, the visuals are going to get refreshed. And right now it's fine because I don't have that many visuals. But if I'm working on a large uh, dashboard that has, let's say, uh, 50,000 objects, then every time we update a visual, then all the charts are going to get updated. They need to wait for uh, those update get finished to make another change. Now, to prevent that, what I want to do here is I want to go to Optimize tab. I want to pause all the uh, updates by clicking on Pulse Visuals. What I will do is, uh, it's not going to update the visual. We are trying to format a visual. All right, so here, uh, let me change these to sales. Oh, and it should be... All right, refresh. And to update the visual, we'll need to manually refresh the uh, visual state. All right, so let's finish the last one. And this one's going to be average union price. So I'm going to click on unit price and I'll change this to average. Now for the uh, category name, I'll name this as AVG unit price. Then I'll update the uh, visual. Right, so again, I want to uh, insert the dollar symbol. Now let's go ahead and create the bar chart. And it's going to be the stack bar graph. Right, so I'm going to align the uh, visual to be the same size as the cars. Now to create the, uh, the bar chart, we're going to display the product category along the y-axis. Right, so from the y-axis category, we want to choose product, then choose product. And for the x-axis, which is going to be the aggregation, I'm going to choose sales from the uh, sales table. All right, so I'm going to refresh the visual to see what the, uh, the chart looks like. All right, so everything looks uh, okay, and there's definitely a bit of improvement that we need to do. All right, so first I'm going to expand all the categories. Now for the uh, bar chart visual, I want to expand the heights a little bit. Let's do 270. Right, so I, don't, I really don't like every time I uh, insert a new number, it automatically highlights the, uh, the number. So I need to be careful when I type in the uh, high value. And I want to move the vertical position to 400, uh, just to make the chart center right in the middle a little bit. Then I'm going to turn off the background. All right, so it's not letting me here. Let me try again. Okay, so here we go. All right, so let's scroll down. And for the uh, chart title, I'll name this as Sales by Prada. 
and make sure that you always uh, turn off the text wrap. All right, so let's see. Let me see what, okay, that does not look good. Now let's format the Y axis. All right, so here I'm going to uh, change the font name or font style to thing. And I'll increase the font size to, uh, let's do uh, nine. And I'm going to turn on this uh, concatenate labels option. All right, so right now, uh, let me make the zoom a little bit bigger. Now for my visual, because the chart title already implied that this is a, a product by sales uh, bar chart. And we have the uh, product and we have the sales. So we don't actually need to display the uh, access uh, title. All right, so let me go back. So I'm going to turn off the title. And same thing for the x-axis. Now this is one side I want to um, make a, a slightly modification, which is going to be the font color. I notice that right now it's using this uh, darker gray. I want to change that to black. Let me just verify the uh, color code. Yeah. So let me change that to black. All right. So. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to change the bar color. Now for the bar color, I want to use the uh, the same color as my theme. All right, so here I uh, click on the visual, and I'm going to search for bar. It should be under bars. Now explain colors, and for the uh, bar color, I'm going to use uh, the color that has the color code three four. Four nine six C, and it's going to be the same color as the uh, the team color. All right, so let's continue. All right, so here I'm going to uh, turn off the gray lines. It's like some bar chart only has for the color uh, gray lines. Now, just for reference, here's the uh, the final result, that, uh, which is going to be the dashboard at the uh, exporter or publish. All right, so here uh, the bar chart has a data label. So here, let's enable the data labels. And I'll keep everything as default. And here, let me change this to thing. And again, I'm going to change the uh, font color to black for the data labels. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. Now let's create the slices. All right, so here I'm going to choose slices from the uh, visual libraries. Now, based on your use case, you want to, uh, first of all, figure out what categories that you want your end users uh, to have option to choose from. Now, for this, uh, for this dashboard, I want my users to be able to choose different year, region, and category. Now, here I'm going to go into the dates table. Then I'm going to choose year. Now for the height, I'll set that to 61. And for the width, I'll set that to 152. And sometimes you may need to play around with the resolution or the visual size to fit into your visual correctly. And for the horizontal location, I'll set this to 478. And for vertical, I'll set that to 5. And I'm going to turn up the background. All right, so let's continue. So right now it's only uh, showing the this uh, filter symbol. Now I'll go into slicer settings. I'll change the slicer type to drop down. And I want to oops, let me go back. And I want to be able to select multiple values. 
Right, so going into uh, slicer header, let me decrease the font size to 11. And for the font color, I'll set that to white. Now to make sure that the font is uh, easy to see, so also need to change the, the values text to white. And here I'm going to decrease the font size and I'll change the font style. Now for the padding, I'm going to change that to zero. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now let me just do a test run. I'm going to select a different year. Actually, uh, all right, so I guess because right now my uh, visuals are paused, so I can uh, uh, select very from my slicer. All right, so let me finish the slices first, and then I'm going to uh, do the testing. All right, so here I'm going to make two more copies. All right, so I'm going to hold the shift key, then I'm going to select these visuals all together. Now go to format, and I want to align to the top. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. I think uh, the spacing actually, this is the hardest part, trying to uh, space everything correctly. Now for the second slicer, I want to change that to region. And this one's going to be category. And to make the slices to look like they are uh, separated, I'm going to insert a line shape as the uh, separator. All right, so make sure that the uh, line shape is select. Then we want to go to rotation. You want to rotate the shape 90 uh, degrees. Then we're going to decrease the width and the height. So here I want to uh, change the shape color or the line color to uh, light gray. And to do that, I want to go into shape and style. And it's going to be under border. Let me turn off fill. All right, so here I'll choose a color that you would like to use. I'm going to choose this uh, light gray. And I'll position the uh, shape, or the line shape, right in between the slices. Now let's do a test run. I'm going to go back to optimize. And I'm going to resume the visuals. All right, so if we look at the, okay, so I don't like the uh, the background, okay. Okay, so uh, right off the bat, I already see uh, we have an issue here. So if, uh, if we look at the, the backgrounds of this uh, view, I guess, and we cannot see the item labels. Now one workaround is we can uh, change the background color of this area, the same color as the theme. All right, so I'm going to click on one of the uh, slicer. Now I'm going to enable the background here. It's not the background. Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to enable the background. And for the color, I'm going to choose the same color as the uh, this uh, theme color. And since I already uh, provided my color code in Power BI, it's going to save in this uh, recent colors uh, group. And I see the color uh, is off a little bit. All right, so here let me merely insert the color code. I don't think that's the correct uh, color code. All right, so it's going to be 204-76D. Yep, that is correct. Now I'm going to um, go back and to the slicer. All right, so the background is off, and this should be another background that I need to modify. Is that right? Let me double check. Under uh, slicer setting, under values, 
There's another background that we need to modify here. Okay, so this time uh, I can see the uh, item text clearly. Now we need to do the same for uh, the other two slices. Let me see if I can modify these two slices all together. So simply hold the control key and select uh, the visuals. And it looks like we're able to do that. So I can select both slices and modify the background color all together. I'm going to select year 2019 and to see how the number changes. And for the region, I'll choose Northeast and Midwest. And that's going to update uh, all the uh, sales number. For Northeast and Midwest, those two regions account for 79% of total sales. And for categories, we have uh, all these uh, categories. All right, so uh, everything looks good so far. Now, the good thing is we're almost finished with the dashboard. Actually, now almost finished. Uh, there's still one more thing to do. There's one more uh, major item to do, which is going to be the tool tip. All right, so the next item we're going to create is this uh, tab navigation uh, feature. And this one's going to be a little more advanced, but it's not too uh, complicated. If you already know, uh, if you already have some basic uh, knowledge, working with uh, bookmarks. All right, so let's go back. And here I forgot to save the file. Let me go ahead and save the file. And I'll name this as sales dashboard b1. And I also want to name my uh, tab. I'll name this as sales report. And let me go ahead and create a new tab. And this one's going to be the tool tip that we're going to create in a second. Now, because uh, when we present the dashboard to other users, we do not want to show the tool tip as its own individual report. So I'm going to make sure that I hide the, the page. Now to create the tab navigation, we need to organize our uh, objects or visual objects. All right, so here let me turn off the uh, format pane. And I want to display both the selection pane and the bookmarks pane. So put our uh, two panes side by side. Now, uh, if you've never used selection pane before, so every time when you create something in your uh, page, every single item that you created is considered as an object. Now, based on all the uh, visuals and all the uh, shapes that I created, we have all these objects in this page. Now, for example, uh, the first thing I did was create this uh, label. I'm going to click on the label and automatically it's going to highlight the object that associated to this label. Now here I'm going to uh, organize my objects by renaming everything to make them uh, descriptive. And I'll name the label, label last updated. Now here based on the object location, it also controls uh, which object goes into the fonts and which object goes to the back. So for example, Let's see, if I move the label right before the image, and that means that she, uh, which image is this? Okay, all right, so let's do this. I'm going to move the uh, label right in front. Actually, uh, the background is transparent. All right, let's use this. So right now, because my, let's see. Uh, I know it's going to be hard to see, but right now because my label is placed before the image. So when we place these two objects, my image logo is going to be on the top and my label is going to be in the back. But if I swap these two items, now the label is going to cover, actually not cover, the label is going to be on top of the uh, my logo object or logo image. 
So this is just a technique that I use to control uh, which object go into the font. But the other option, you can change the uh, location is by going into the format tab. Then you can uh, use bring backward or forward to move the uh, object location. All right, so here let me put that back. And this is going to be image logo. All right, so uh, for my naming convention, I always like to name the object type first, followed by uh, the object name. Now let's uh, group these four cards together into its own uh, group. And I'll name this as car group. All right, so uh, this is going to be average union price, sales, sales percentage of regions, and quantity. Then I'm going to group the slices. Right, so this one's going to be region. Category and year. And let me uh, position the real the uh, slices here, region and category. And these two are going to be the uh, line shapes. All right, so I'll put that in the uh, shape category. Oh, no, not category, the shape group. Let me make that this as a plural. Right. And because it doesn't matter uh, which line go to the left and which line go to the right, so I can name this as the same. Let's name this as line two. And this will be uh, line one. Now for the uh, chart visuals, such as a bar chart, the, uh, the object name is going to tie to the title. So. Unfortunately, you cannot rename uh, this selection to something that you like. So for example, if I want to name this as bar chart sales by Prada, and it's going to also update the uh, title as well. Right, so for that, I usually just uh, keep the name as the same. And I'll put this right here. Right, so let me go back to optimize and I'll pause the visuals. Now let's create the uh, navigation tabs. All right, so here we're going to create three buttons. And I want to choose blank button. All right, so let me enable the uh, format pane. All right, so for the button height, I'll set that to 54. And for the width, I'll set that to 167. And for the uh, horizontal location, it's going to be 860. And for the code, it's going to be 141. Now I want to go into button style category, and right here. Now if we look at the uh, button, so we have this uh, halving effect, and to create the halving effect. There are two states we need to uh, address. The first one's going to be the default state. And I'm just going to be what the button's going to look like by default. All right, so here I'm going to enable the text category. Let me, just let me do that. Okay, here we go. And I'll name the button sales trend. And for the horizontal alignment, I want to set that to center. And for the vertical alignment, we want to set that to the top. Now for the icon, I'm going to set that as default. Now I want to uh, fill the background. 
Now here for the transparency, we want to set that to 100%. And I'll turn off the border. Right, because we haven't created uh, uh, bookmarks yet, so we can uh, implement the action. And this will be the step once we create all the bookmarks. I'm going to make two more copies of the button. Right, so I can simply select my button object and copy and paste. Actually, I don't think I can do that. Let me just do that here. Right, so that's the first one. Actually, no, that's the second one. And it's the third one. Now here I'm going to group these three buttons. All right, so this one's going to be sales decomposition. Oh, I forgot the uh, object name. All right, so let me fix that. And I'll use BTN to uh, reference button object. And this one will be button, BTN, sales chain. And this one will be sales map. Now again, I want to organize the uh, buttons. This one will go first, map, and chain. Now here, the only thing I need to modify is the uh, horizontal and vertical location. Okay, so this one's going to be 141. And this one too. And for the uh, first button, sales chain, the horizontal is going to be 525. Now to create the halving effect, let me see if I can select all the uh, buttons. And I think I can. Right, so I'm going to select all the uh, buttons. And I'm going to go to button style. And for the state, I'm going to change that to on hover. So basically what I will do is, uh, you can modify the uh, button format style or the format setting to be the uh, appearance that you want the button to look like based on this uh, state. Now for the formatting style, I simply just want to change the uh, font color and use this uh, blue color. And I want to set the vertical alignment to middle. And I also want to change the background color. So the transparency is going to be 0% this time. This one thing I forgot to do. Let's go back to the text uh, section. I want to set the text to bold. All right, so that looks pretty good, but I don't like the, the color that I'm using. Let me change to the, the, the other one. Now I need to update the uh, button caption. And this one's going to be sales decomposition. And let me copy paste the, uh, the text. I need to do that for both on hover and default state. And this one too. And this will be sales map. All right, so once we create the buttons, and let me name the uh, button group to inactive. So basically to create uh, a tab navigation feature or to implement the tab navigation feature, we need to create two sets of buttons. The first group is going to be the uh, default button or the inactive buttons. And the second group is going to be the active button. Basically, it's going to be this uh, button display that you're seeing right here for uh, sales decomposition. All right, so going back to the uh, sales dashboard. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select the uh, buttons in active group. 
And I'm going to make a copy. Should I it doesn't let me copy everything at once. Let me see. Okay, so here we go. And I'll put this on the top for now. And I'll name uh, the buttons active. Actually, uh, shoot. Yeah, because with the active button, there's no uh, hover state. That's okay, I'm going to delete everything. And I'll uh, just grab one of the button. Copy and paste. And I'll use this as a template. Right, so for the button style, I'm going to choose a hover and I'm going to set everything back to uh, the default state. All right, so this is going to be what the uh, button is going to uh, look like. All right, so it's going to look like this uh, when we set the uh, tab as the add tab tab. In that case, we just need to make the default state the same as the uh, hovering state. All right, so here, let me go back to default. And I'll change the font color. And for the vertical alignment, it's going to be middle. Background is going to be white. And the text will be bold. Now I'm just do a quick comparison to make sure that they look exactly the same. Okay, I think they look pretty good. I'm going to make uh, two more copies. And this time we can simply align the button against the uh, inactive buttons. All right, so this one's going to be sales map. So we need to change the uh, button text. And this one's going to be sales trend. Sales map. I'm going to group these uh, buttons together. And I'll name the button group buttons active. Now I can move the uh, buttons to align against the inactive buttons. Right, so let me take a look. Okay, I think that was pretty good. Let me look at the vertical location, 141. Now once uh, these two buttons groups are uh, overlap, we're going to create our bookmarks. Let me go back to my report. All right, so basically we have three different uh, views. So when we enable the sales the conversation tab. These two inactive buttons is going to get displayed. And the inactive sales deconversation button is going to be hidden. And we're going to display uh, the active sales deconversation button. And the same logic flow for the other two uh, tabs. All right, so let's do the uh, first tab first. Now here I'm going to hide the sales map and the sales trend button under the active group. And from the inactive button, I'm going to hide the 
sales decomposition button. Then I'm going to create a bookmark to save this uh, view state. All right, so where's my bookmark? All right, so I'm going to create a new bookmark. And I'll name this as sales report decomposition. So for my naming convention, I usually like to uh, use the page name first. And because uh, bookmarks are not tied to uh, each page, this is going to be a global view that every single page's bookmark is going to be uh, list in this uh, single view. All right, so here I'm going to make sure that I disconnect the uh, data linkage. And also make sure that I use the bookmark only for the current page. Now I need to do it uh, two more times. Here me enable uh, the object view. Now I'm going to enable the sales map button and hide the other one. And this one too. And I'll create a new bookmark. And I'll name this as sales report, sales map. And the last one is going to be sales trend. All right, so make sure that you disconnect the data linkage for the other two bookmarks as well. Now, if we hold the control key and we can simply, oh, okay, so I forgot. So we haven't um, implemented the action yet. All right, so here let's do that right now since we create the bookmarks. All right, so basically, actually, uh, actually let's do that later. I'm going to create my uh, visuals first. Let's go to the uh, decomposition view. Now here I'm going to insert a decomposition visual. And this one will be under uh, the AI visuals category. And it should be this one here. All right, so what this visual will do is, it's going to break down your uh, values into multiple categories. So basically, uh, it's a type of visuals that you can see the breakdown of a value. All right, so here I'm going to expand the visual to fit into this uh, white area. Now I want to see the breakdown of my total sales. So I'm going to choose sales uh, for the analyze uh, category. And it's going to be uh, total sales. And I want to see the breakdown by demographic. And it should be under, and I think this is going to be under Prada right here, demographic. And from demographic, I want to break down by Potter. So you don't necessarily need to use the same field as uh, as mine. You can use any field that you uh, you're interested in, and then I want to break down by region. All right, so let's refresh the uh, visual, and I'm going to create the the tree view. So I want to break down by demographic. All right, so when I create the decomposition visual, I need to resume the visuals uh, update. Then I want to see the breakdown by professional, followed by product, then by region. All right, so here I'm going to uh, name the, the chart. Let's name this as summary. Decomposition. Actually, sales. Decomposition. All right, so here's uh, go ahead and format the visual. Now I want to go into analysis. And make sure that the split is set to absolute. And if I want to adjust the, uh, the tree setting, such as the density or how the uh, action is going to get uh, handled, 
then you can go into the tree settings uh, category. But I'm going to leave those two as uh, default. Now for the uh, connector, I want to change the uh, the active line to my dim color. And for the unselect line, which is are going to be on uh, these lines here, I'll use a darker gray color. Now for the bar color, I'll change that to the uh, the same dim color. All right, so here I want to uh, slightly decrease the size to make sure that everything is going to fit into uh, this area nicely and for the label I'll choose the, uh, the font style and this one too Right, so uh, for now, this is going to be everything that I'm going to apply. I don't want to make uh, the visual a little bit too complicated, but I know it's that here. Uh, why is this number has this many decimal places? Right, so here I'm going to go into values and I'll set the uh, decimal places to two. Now we need to update the, uh, the bookmark and this will be under the uh, decomposition bookmark. Right, so I need to enable the uh, selection pane again. Now for the uh, sales map, want to use the uh, mass visual. All right, so here we need to hide the decomposition visual, and which is going to be on the summary. Now here, uh, let's go ahead and use the shape map. My location is going to be the uh, state code. So under state, choose state code. And for the uh, saturation color, and it's going to be sales. Now let's go ahead and format the, uh, the visual. And so I'm going to explain all the categories and I'll uh, turn off the background. For the uh, title, I'll name this as hover um, a state for sales detail. All right, so unfortunately we cannot rename uh, the, the abja uh, name here. Now for the uh, font size, I'll set that to 10. And this time for the uh, text color, I'll use the darker gray color. So that's too light, let's use this one. All right, so I'll keep this the same. Now here I want to uh, change the, uh, the shape color. Now for the uh, minimum value, I'm going to use the color code B7, BE, D0. And for the maximum color, I'll use this one here. Actually we can, uh, here let's go to more colors. Uh, shouldn't go back. All right, so one way we can uh, choose the color within the same uh, theme. I'll paste the light color color code and basically you want to choose the color code that is in the same uh, vertical alignment. And let's use this one here. Right, 
and that does not look good. Right, so let me use the color that I, I was using. And for the maximum color, it's going to be 475D8A. Now here for the uh, minimum value, for the uh, sales number, it always starts from zero. And for the maximum, this is really based on your uh, data set. Now for this data set, I'm going to use 1 million to be uh, the maximum. Right, so everything else is going to be the same. Now this is going to be the uh, sales map uh, visual. Now we're going to update the uh, bookmark for the sales report, sales map uh, bookmark. All right, so here click on the, uh, oops, I think I accidentally click on the other bookmark. All right, so we also need to update. Now because, uh, all right, so because I create uh, both visuals after I create a bookmark, let me do this. I'm going to hide uh, these two bookmarks for now. And for this, okay. Uh, let me hide those two. Now for the uh, sales trend summary, I'm going to insert the uh, line and stack column graph, actually stack column chart. And it's going to be on the top. For the uh, x-axis, uh, let's use months because uh, we're going to represent the, uh, the time period. And for the sales, it's going to be total sales. And for the line y-axis, I'm going to use the average price. Oh, this should be price, not sales. Right, so again, I'm going to expand all the categories. Now for the x-axis, let's take a look. I'm actually going to hide the title. Alright, so let me do this. I'm going to uh, close uh, those two panes. Alright, so let me hide the category labels. Actually, not category labels. The X and Y axis labels or titles. Okay, I think that looks okay. Uh, and on the y-axis, I'm going to also hide the title. Now for the gray lines, I'm only going to display horizontal gray lines. So on the horizontal, I'll make the uh, style to solid. And I'll increase the uh, gray line width to three pixel. Now for the uh, line color, let's use something a little bit uh, darker. Now I want to change the bar color. Actually, I think the width to a little bit too much. Uh, here, let me make that a bit lighter. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Now for the uh, bar color, it will be under uh, columns. And let's change that to match to our theme. And it should be the other color. And for the uh, line color, 
I want to use yellow to match to the theme. Right, so it's not showing all the y-axis labels. Here, let me expand this. All right, so let me see if I can fix that. All right, so that's okay. Uh, let's continue. So I want to fix the legend. So going into legend, I want to position the legend to top right. Now to fix the uh, labels, so basically we have to do it from the fields. And this will be average price. Oh, I should uh, to that back. Uh, this will be sales. And this will be average price. All right, so I think that was pretty good. Uh, but I really want to fix uh, this uh, label issue. All right, so that's okay. Uh, I'll come back to this later. All right, so let's finish the, uh, the dashboard. Now I'm going to insert a line shape to divide uh, this uh, visual. Now for the summary, we're going to use AI to create, uh, to auto create the summary. Uh, here, let me change the line color. We need to go into border. And where is it? Let me uh, resize the shape. Oh, it should be under uh, shape style. They want to turn off fill, and for the border color, I'm going to use this uh, light gray color. Now to create the uh, the summary description, under insert, want to choose smart narrative. So what I will do is, it's going to look at your overall uh, visuals based on anything that you created in this page. And it's going to attempt to summarize your reports into uh, paragraphs, basically. All right, so I'm going to move that here. All right. So for now, I'm going to leave everything as it is. And I think I just figure out uh, how to fix this uh, Y, not Y. Uh, the this uh, x axis labels issue. All right, so going back to the date table, I want to create a calculation column. And I'll name this as month name. All right, so it's going to be format dates dates. And I want to format the uh, date column to year a month. Let me swap the field with the month name uh, column I created. Now going back to the uh, dates table, we need to fix the sorting. All right, so here we want to sort the um, month name column by the dates column. All right, so here, uh, Simply go to home, it should not home. Uh, make sure that month's name count is select. Then go to counts. And want to sort the count by the dates count. All right, so I guess I uh, should be fine. Let's see this.
and this will be three amps. Right, so I guess I give up. I'm going to just use the, use the regular uh, mouse name uh, column. So let me try this. I'm going to make this as a date table. And it's been a while since I do this. And it's going to be based on the date column. And let me delete the hierarchy. All right, so let me give it a try again. And this is the last attempt. And if that doesn't work, uh, I'll try to figure out after uh, this video. All right, so I give up. And I'm going to use mouse for the uh, X axis label. All right, so that seems to mess up my Smart narrative. And let me recreate the uh, narrative. All right, so once we create all the uh, visuals for the uh, tab name to be used for the uh, tab navigation. Now we need to update our bookmarks. All right, so here I need to enable the bookmark pane and the selection pane. All right, so when the sales trend tab is activated, I want to show uh, these three items. And that's what we have here. And let me change this to smart narrative. And it's going to tie to the sales trend bookmark. Now, when the sales map tab is active, we want to hide everything except the uh, map visual and update the bookmark. And same thing for decomposition uh, bookmark. Want to hide everything? And the shape visual. And update the bookmark. Now if I hold the control key and oh, I forgot to assign the action. All right, so that's okay. Uh, let me rename the objects. All right, so this is going to be the uh, summary. So let's do line, shape, and it's going to be three. Smart narrative, and this one is, oh, okay. Now I'm going to display all the inactive buttons. Let me hide the active button for now. All right, so basically what we want to do here is every time when we click on one of the inactive button, we want to select the bookmarks accordingly based on different state. So when we click on the sales decomposition button, and we want to enable the action setting, and for the action, we want to choose bookmark. And for the bookmark, we want to use uh, sales report decomposition. And want to turn off the tooltip. Now for sales map, we'll do the same. Bookmark. And for the uh, bookmark, we want to use sales map. Turn off the tooltip. And this will be sales trend. All right, so let me check uh, everything else. Okay. So that looks good. 
So make sure that you unhide both uh, button groups. And that should be it. All right, so if I click on sales map, sales chain. All right, so this one is not working. Oh, okay. So for some reason, the action is not uh, embedded to this button. All right, so let me try again. All right, so everything looks good. Now, just to add a personal touch, now if I'm going to add this on a dashboard as your portfolio, then one thing I would like to do is I would like to add a link to my uh, linking profile. All right, so here, let me copy paste my uh, linking logo. I'm going to go to insert image. I'm going to insert uh, the linking logo. All right, so here I'm going to turn off the lock aspect ratio. All right, and I resize the image. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. Now click on the image or the logo want to go to action. Now from the action type, choose web URL. And for the uh, URL that I want to open, when I click on this uh, linking uh, logo, I'm going to use my linking uh, page URL. Now if you have a website, then we can embed your website's uh, link to the uh, dashboard logo. All right, so here I'm also going to do that. I'm going to go to action, enable action, and open the web URL, and I'll paste the link, and turn off the tooltip. All right, guys, so we have officially finished with the sales report page. Now, the last thing we need to finish is the tooltip, and we're just going to take a very, very uh, short amount of time to finish. All right, so here, uh, Let's go to the Format tab. Now, to use a page as a tooltip, we want to go to uh, Page Information. And for the page type, make sure that you set that to uh, tooltip. Now, here for the uh, canvas background, I'm going to uh, just choose a, a light gray color. And because the transparency is set to 100%, so let me change that to uh, 0%. All right, so the, uh, everything looks good so far. Now let's work on creating the tooltip. Now the first thing I want to display on the top is the uh, the state name. And we can do that by inserting the car label. And I'll expand the words to fit into the uh, tooltip. Uh, just the top. And for the fill, we're going to choose stay, stay, and it's going to be the stay name. Now for the background, I'm going to turn that off. And I feel like the, uh, let me change the zoom to 100%. All right, so I feel like the font size, we can go to call out value, and we'll decrease the font size to, let's do, 30%, I think 30 looks pretty good. And I'll change uh, the vertical alignment. And can I do that here? All right, so I don't think I can do that here, but I'm going to turn off the text wrap. And also uh, turn off the category label. Okay, so I think that fixed the, uh, the spacing issue. Let's go ahead and uh, insert the summary detail by using another car. Now for the summary detail, I want to display uh, three things, total quantity, total sales, and the sales by demographic. All right, so here you can simply use sales quantity. And now change the uh, font size to 11. 
Okay, I think 11 might be too small. Let's do 20. All right, so 20 looks pretty good. Now for the uh, decimal place, I'm going to set that to zero. And I'll leave the units as uh, auto. And I'll turn off the text wrap. All right, so here uh, for the category name, and this should be, oh, here. I'll name this as quantity. Now to make the background look a little bit nicer, I'm going to turn on the shadow. And also uh, turn off the border. So the border is not enabled. Okay, so, okay, now my, I think that looks pretty good. All right, so simply copy uh, the card visual, we'll use that as a template. And I'll put that right here. And this one's going to be total sales. And I want to change um, the units. Let me see if I need to do that. And let's do, actually let's do auto. So I, I said auto looks pretty good for now. And the last one's going to be the bar graph. All right, so I'm going to use the stack bar chart. I'm going to resize the uh, bar chart to be the same height as both uh, card visuals. Now here, the y-axis is going to be the demographic. And the x-axis is going to be total sales. Right, so again, I'm going to enable the shadow. I'll name this as sales by demographic. And I'll decrease the font size. All right, because uh, this is a tool tip, so I'm going to turn off the, the gray lines. So go into gray lines and turn off both Actually, there's only a vertical gray line involved. So turn that off. And for the bar color, go to bars and choose the, the thin color. Actually, that's the wrong color. It should be this one. All right, so uh, here I'm going to turn off the X axis label. And for the y-axis label, I want to be able to display the text over there. All right, so on the y-axis, you want to go into values, and here you want to make sure that we set the uh, area ratio to the maximum, which is 50%. And to make sure that nothing gets cut off, I'm going to turn on the concatenate labels uh, setting. And the last thing I want to do here is I want to display the data labels. All right, so I think that looks, uh, that looks okay. Not perfect, but okay. Let me reposition the uh, bar chart. All right, so that's going to be the two tip that I'm going to use to map to my map visual. Now go back to the sales report uh, page. And I'm going to select my uh, sales map state from the uh, books master list. All right, so here, Select the uh, map visual and want to go to actions. Now, if I simply hover my mouse to one of the states, now as you can see that the information that is displayed, it doesn't look very nice. Now, what I want to do here is want to go to uh, properties. I want to expand two tips. Now for the type, make sure that Report page is a uh, select. They want to uh, choose to tip as the uh, selection. Now, because from the uh, math visual or the shape math visual, each state is going to be tied to uh, different uh, state uh, state code right here. And the state code is going to be the filter condition. So when we're using this tooltip, 
So whenever this uh, tooltip is activated, it's going to filter uh, the information based on the state name. And that's how you are able to uh, create a very unique customized uh, tooltip visual that are tied to shape map visual. All right, so let's see. I want to do just a couple more uh, testings before I publish this report. So I want to choose a different region. And let me look at different tabs. All right, so right now everything looks good. I'm going to uh, fit everything into the page. Now, when I publish this report, I want uh, the default uh, view to be like this. So the sales decomposition tab is uh, active and everything is going to be unchecked. And the tool tips page is uh, hidden. All right, so once you verify everything is uh, correct or everything looks good to you, then we can publish this report by go to file, publish, publish to Power BI. Now I want to save your file. Now choose a workspace uh, for the report to be published. I'm going to choose my workspace. Now once you publish this report, you can uh, open the report. Now I want to uh, publish this report publicly so I can show other people. And to do that, I want to go to File, Embedded Report. And here I'm going to choose Publish to Web, Public. I want to create the embedded code. Publish. Now I can uh, change the, the report size. And I always like to set to the maximum. And I can copy uh, this URL right here. Let me open a private browser. I can paste the link. And that will take me to uh, the report that we created using Power BI. So I can play around with the, uh, the sales report. And I can uh, choose different years from the slices. And finally, if someone to reach out to you, uh, when they have questions or they want to ask you to uh, help them to build a report, then they can either click on uh, the logo to go to uh, your website or click on the LinkedIn uh, logo to go into your uh, LinkedIn's profile page and reach out to you. All right, so this is going to be everything I'm going to share in this video. And hopefully you guys find this video useful. And I know this is a pretty long tutorial, but I really want to uh, show you how to build a dashboard from scratch, uh, from zero all the way to being able to publish a report online. Now, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, reach out to me. I will leave a comment in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give this video a like and click on the subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.